long been loyal and loud supporters. It's been 13 years since the Cowbells have rung this deep into the season for an unbeaten team. Now the Bulldogs are looking to bite into the SEC's top passing attack. That high-flying Tennessee offense trying to break through with a much-needed win against a ranked opponent. Michael Pilardi to kick for Tennessee. Lewis and Perkins back deep for the home team. And Perkins is going to take it out. Well, Darius Perkins, and he barely makes it out to the 13-yard line, tackled by Eric Gordon. Tyler Russell, Mississippi State quarterback, is enjoying himself a pretty good start to the season. But now is the time for him to be able to take his big step forward. You can see the numbers. They're kind of self-explanatory. But Russell's role tonight will be that they're going to have a lot of pressure on his shoulders, and he's got to come through for him. He is on pace this year to break the school record for passing yards in a season. Comes in with 10 touchdowns against only one interception. Play action. Russell with time down the field, and he's able to get it complete to Marcus Green, the senior tight end. That's exactly, Tess, what he needs to do. When you watch this kid on tape, sometimes he hesitates a little bit instead of throwing to his spot. And this is a spot throw. And that's a perfect spot throw. Marcus 29 Green with the yard reception by the six year senior. Empty set here on first down at the 42. Pressure off the edge, but he gets it to Bumpus, who then lowers his shoulder and drives ahead for another first down. Well, they wanted a hot start on a Russell, and he's two for two. And this Bumpus kid is a guy that they need to integrate into this offense because he's one of their one of their few playmakers. Not big speed, but he can make the plays down the field. It's Byron Moore, number three there, with the stop. So a first down past midfield. Good start to the night for Mississippi State. And there goes Darius Perkins. And Perkins with a 10-yard run before he's tackled by Willie Bohannon. First three plays go for 29 yards, 11 yards, and now 10 yards. Just moving the chains with ease against this Tennessee defense that has struggled much throughout the season. Perkins in the slot here on this empty set. That's Bumpus in motion. Russell on the slam. Oh. That is knocked away by Justin Coleman. A good play by the sophomore cornerback. Yeah, that, and you can see Coleman's just getting better and better. Coleman on top of Clark. Now, Clark is going to try to get inside position on him, but Coleman just read it perfectly and beautifully knocked the ball away. Coleman played well against Georgia last time out. A win right here, Tess, would be for this defense to hold them to three. They've been giving up just under 30 points a game this year, Tennessee. Quickly turns and blockers in front for Bumpus, but unable to get anywhere that time as Bohannon came in and made a fine looking defensive play. They're trying to get the ball. Now they know they're limited with who their playmakers are. They know that Bumpus is the main guy. Now, we're not the only ones who can say that. Now, Tennessee's defense knows the same thing. And the one thing that Tennessee's doing right here in this last part of this series is good tackling. And that's really what's hurt them to the first part of the season in their losses. They were awful at tackling. There's the guy with 18 career receiving touchdowns at Mississippi State, Chad Bumpus. Let's see if he looks at him here. That is deflected and it falls incomplete. So a little bend but don't break by the Tennessee defense. That was Herman Lathers who deflected that pass. Yeah, Lathers 34, the inside backer. And that right there, that's a win. That's a win for Tennessee after they were gouged for big plays. They, they, they uh, bucked up down there and see if they can hold it to a field goal. 
Devin Bell struggled earlier this year, missed his first three attempts in the season, but he's rebounded, making his last six. This attempt from 31. And he gets the Bulldogs on the scoreboard to open up this game. Under the lights in the SEC, Mississippi State up a field goal. Bell the kick to Patterson and Devrin Young. Oh, that's a boom. Of course, the new rule in college football kicks from the 35 yard line this year, so we're seeing more and more touchbacks this season. Well, here's Tyler Bray, the six foot six junior pro prospect. He has 14 touchdown passes. That's the most in the SEC coming into this week. Throws for over 300 yards per game in his 17 career starts. Tess, this is one of the best offensive lines in the SEC and in the country. They don't give up a lot of pressure. And they don't give up, and they give up very few sacks. Ray John Neal in the backfield with Bray. And he will get the call to start things off. And that's a good effort for 11 yards by Ray John Neal. You watched a lot of tape this week. What did you come up with for a game plan for Tennessee? Well, defensively, they can't give up the big plays. They, they, they've been getting killed on them. And then they have to win the matchups outside with their receivers and eliminate the missed tackles. If they do that, they're going to protect and throw the ball well here tonight. Ray completes to Justin Hunter, and you can see how elusive he can be. Let's see if he can get to that edge. Hunter, look at him just make the most and dance throughout the entire Mississippi State defense for 15 yards all the way out past midfield. Now they're going with the fast pace here, but Justin Hunter is not known for his running. He's not much of Patterson's the one who can really get the run after catch, but that's a great effort by Hunter. Oh, Patterson's one of the best with the ball in his hands. Rajon Neal this time just a gain of one as he was taken down by Jamerson Love. It's a nice matchup. Here's the problem with this Mississippi State defense, if they have one, because they're sound defensively schematically, but they really don't have a pass rusher. They don't have a guy that they can count on to get to the to get pressure off the edge. They're going to have to push from inside or bring numbers with blitzes. Second and nine. Here's Bray. And that is complete to Zach Rogers, the guy you said would be the X factor tonight, Matt. Yeah, and talking to Coach Dooley about him when we brought him up, he said, hey, he's healthy. He's not a big man. But when he comes in the game, he's a matchup problem for this Mississippi State defense. They can't go man all the way around. He has great speed and can get on top of a coverage. 19-yard reception already inside the 30-yard line are the balls. Here's Neal now. And Neal finds a little seam on the left side of the line. The impact players for Tennessee brought to you by Firestone. Well, we already talked about the first two in Justin Hunter and Patterson. You can see that. Their linebacker, A.J. Johnson, doubles. Sometimes he comes in as a fullback. He's one of the, what they call the beast formation when he comes in on the goal line. But that's a solid player. Second and six. Lane again. And he drives ahead. He's just going to be a yard short. It'll be third and one as he's tackled by P.J. Jones. And this defensive front of Mississippi State, as you look at Coach Dooley, Getting this communication right down there. This defensive front is tired. They don't have great depth. You want to be able to roll guys in when you're going with a quick pace. And when you get tired, you start to make mental mistakes. That's the whole key to defending this thing is you have to maintain the integrity of this front. Third and one. As Bray checks. Ray Jean Neal. You got a man to man. In the eye top. formation is the tailback. Bartholomew, the fullback, looking to lead the way. Here's Neal. Easily gets it and drives into the end zone for a touchdown. Fatigue, Joe Tessator, is one of the main culprits for poor tackling. And I think we just saw it right there. There's chances at this. Go up and stick your face in there. He just runs right through the tackles. Slade tries to jump on him. Didn't work. Michael Pilardi, they've had some issues with missed extra points this year, but he puts it through. And that Tennessee offense, they've had their way this year, and they keep up that kind of pace. 
From the box up top, Dooley likes what he sees. Clardy to kick off for Tennessee. Balls lead at 7 to 3. Clardy, left foot, a line drive kick that's going to bounce at the 10 and go out of bounds. Third and 19 now. Russell trying to extend the play, and he does for a first down to Chris Smith. How about that? And Russell grabbing his right hand at the end there. That was all Russell. That was outstanding by Tyler Russell because he bought time. Not a guy who's known. Oh, boy, he took a shot right there from Jacquez Smith. But not a guy known for his for his movement outside the pocket, but right on the money and a huge third down. 20 yard reception on a third and 18. Perkins. Look at Perkins get through and he crosses midfield. Skims his way down to the 47 yard line. That's one of the things that Dan Mullen and his staff wanted to do was win on first down. And a win for them is at least five yards. You want to be able to get to third and manageable. Here you see they picked up six. So they want to get into that third and manageable. They think that's where they win the game. Win that first down. They've moved the chains consistently this year with balance. They have not relied on the big play. This is how they go about their business. <laughs> Russell the pass on second and four. And he gets it complete to Arcedo Clark for another Bulldogs first down. Well, he's fired up, and he should be. This is the best start that he's had. And why? Patience. This, I want you to watch, watch the patience. He's going to let this route clear until he comes open behind him. And Clark finds the hole, and so does Russell for a big first down. 16-yard reception. That's what Clark averages on the year per catch. So a first down at the 19-yard line. Josh Robinson now the back for Mississippi State. Here is Robinson. And just good hard running as Robinson gets it down close to the 10 yard line. Well, they have been running on first down. They said they wanted to win the down. And when you're running it on first down, that means your offensive line is winning up front. They've been getting six yards, six yards, and now here at nine yards. That's a big job for that offensive line. Robinson stays in. He goes 5'8, 215. Runs like a bowling ball. And here he goes right into the end zone. Touchdown, State. That bowling ball had great eyes. Look at that beautiful cut back inside. Really well done. Five and zero, oh. and their first response of the night to that Tennessee offense. Josh Robinson, the ten-yard touchdown run. Now we move ahead to further action in the first quarter. State first down from the Tennessee 40. Bulldogs lead 10-7. A handoff tailback. This time Tennessee gets across the line of scrimmage. And Nick Griffin, the tailback, is swarmed under for a loss of three as Kurt Majit comes across to make the play. So a good start for this stand for Tennessee and Majit that time, just able to whip the blocker and get in the backfield. He did. They pulled a guard to come out and kick him out. He whipped the guard and made the tackle. Battle on that turf toe is Majit, but it'll be second down 13, Mississippi State from the Tennessee 43-yard line. Russell out of the shotgun again. Two wideouts on either side. Russell back to throw. They throw a pass down the right sideline, wide open to the 30-yard line and out of bounds on a first down. Perkins comes swinging out of the backfield down the far right sideline. There was nobody near him. He catches the ball and gets 14 yards before he shoved out of bounds and a first down. Bob, they, they, they 
blitzed their nickel back, so a linebacker had to take the back out of the backfield. It just had to be blown coverage. A.J. Johnson, trail on the play, finally shoves him out of bounds, but the Bulldogs pick up another first down. State leads 10-7, driving under a minute to go third quarter. A first quarter, handoff, tailback going right, and that time it's Perkins, and he's going to be tackled for no gain. Let's go downstairs to Andy. Guys, a couple of plays ago when Kurt Majit made the play in the backfield, he immediately ran off the field. Uh, the, 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 the trainers were, and staff were looking at his left sh- shoulder, perhaps just a stinger, but he's, he hasn't returned yet. They're not talking to him anymore, but he's definitely in some pain. Second down, 10. Mississippi State, 17 seconds to go first quarter. Russell this time empties the backfield when they get this play off before the quarter ends. Russell on second down and 10 from the Tennessee 29. Russell gets the snap back to throw. Fires that pass is going to be broken up by Ladarius McNeil. They try to throw the out pattern, and McNeil comes over and makes a nice play. Going to be third and nine when we start playing the second quarter. As the first quarter comes to an end with Mississippi State leading Tennessee 10 to 7. Back in a moment, this is Tennessee football on the Vol Network. Mississippi State starts the second quarter with a 10 7 lead over Tennessee. Third down and nine now. That's Nick Griffin now coming to the backfield with Tyler Russell. They only bring four. And he just overthrew the intended target. A flag does come in at the end as he was looking for Joe Morrow, but Justin Coleman was in there. Coleman must have had a hand on him or something on the book. I didn't see it from up here. He's not saying very much about it, though. A little disappointment up in the press box. That's where Derek Dooley is coaching from tonight. Dan Mullen pacing the sidelines. Mullen has seen his offense start off the season in record form. They have the highest point total through their first five games here at Mississippi State since all the way back in 1944. New quarterback is Prescott and Dak Prescott. Gets it down to the 12-yard line. You'll see Prescott, the redshirt freshman, come in with a run package every so often. He's big and thick, 230-pounder, and he runs it for six yards that time. You can also throw test. You know, Dan Mullen was at Florida when he had Tebow, and that's exactly what this kid reminds me of. This kid throws pretty well also. And fittingly, he wears number 15. Mullen had that other number 15 back in Gainesville. And now he fakes the run, and he does throw it to a wide-open Marcus Green. That was perfect. That's what you want Prescott to do right there. He softened him with a punch in the stomach with the run, and then he fakes the run, and Green's wide open. First touchdown pass for Dak Prescott. Unbeaten and looking good. Mississippi State 17-7. The young Dak Prescott impressively Throwing the touchdown pass to Marcus Green, Mississippi State up 10. Tennessee defense has struggled plenty this year, giving up big yardage totals to Florida and Georgia. They gave up 555 to Florida, even more to Georgia. And now Mississippi State's offense is finding it easy early on tonight. Kick from Bell. Here's Patterson from the two. Watch out for. Patterson and here he goes for Daryl Patterson trying to break free cuts back could he get all the way Patterson touchdown balls 98 yard kickoff return for the score How to quiet a cowbell by Cornerell Patterson. This is just 
you either have this or you don't have it. Patterson's got it in spades, man. He's got great running ability. For Daryl Patterson, that is instant offense. He is one of the breakout players in college football this season. Derek Dooley up in the box can breathe a little easier thanks to this man. Here's Pilardi's kick to Perkins. He brings it out from the goal line out to the 27-yard line, and the Bulldogs will have a first down. Derek Milton into the game at tailback for the Bulldogs. They'll fake it to him, rolling out right. Here comes Russell, is going to dump it off complete up to the 40, and down the sideline and shoved out of bounds comes Chad Bumpus. First down for the Bulldogs as they fake the wide receiver screen, and then it opens everything up downfield for Arcito Clark. He had a choice. He could have gone deep intermediate or in the flat. Again, it's three levels, and you're going to watch him up top. They're going to get down and then out to the outside. Here he comes. Then just sneak. See how he delays? One level, two levels, three levels. That's really well done. 11th play tonight, over 10 yards by Mississippi State's offense. To pass now on first down, and that's low and caught for just a gain of a yard by Chris Smith. Nice job by this offensive line. Good protection. Russell is, when he's had to buy time, he's bought some time, but he has been dead on here tonight. Is watching him, one of the things that plagued him a little bit, he's talked to Coach Dan Mullen about it, was at times he didn't quite trust his receivers and he needed to let rid of the, get rid of the ball a little quicker. Tonight, he's been flawless. Mullen likes how calm he is in situations like this. There's some pressure and he finds Perkins out of the backfield who spins his way for a first down. Now that's on Perkins and on Russell because they came with a blitz off the edge. You're going to see it right there in his face. And so it's just a hot. And if he's coming, if the coverage is coming, there's nobody back there. Prentiss Wagner got just a piece of him. And into the game now comes Dak Prescott. Remember what he did moments ago. Ran the ball and then faked the run and threw a touchdown pass. Let's see what he does this time in the red zone. Prescott, little option play, and they were all over that. Nowhere to go as the entire defensive line was quickly on top of Prescott, led by Miller and Smith. Dak Prescott, just a redshirt freshman. His mother suffering from cancer. She's been undergoing chemo treatment on a night when you see plenty of pink and you see the socks and shoes of Prescott as Mississippi State joins in so many in their efforts to fight for the cure. Tyler Russell is legit. This is an outstanding player. This is a good offensive line, and they're just getting better. To the end zone, and that is thrown far wide of the intended target, Arcito Clark, who was covered by Justin Coleman. So it'll make for a third and 14. Again, remember, this is they had a, a big third and 18 conversion earlier in the first quarter. They wanted to stay out of this third and long. Now, when you're inside the 20 yard line in this red zone, all your angles change. It's a short field. Defenders get better jumps on the balls, and you don't really have, you can't really stretch the field. So more is on the shoulders of the quarterback. Number six, Malcolm Johnson, who's back from an injury, is checked into the game. He's in the slot in the near side. Third and 14. And it is a design quarterback run as the ball, as Russell held on to that at the end and is taken down at the seven yard line. All right, so what Dan Mullins says, look, we, we, we don't think we're going to be able to get this. We'll take a shot at it on the run, but we're not going to give up position. In fact, we want to gain some ground here for field position. I really like Dan Mullen. I think this is a rising star in college football. For I think so many years, he was with Urban Meyer, 
at Bowling Green, Utah offensive coordinator at Florida, now his fourth season here at Mississippi State. And he's had great success. He'll continue to have success. The fear down here is that he would go for an to another job, a bigger job. And that kick is good. Flag. On a flag down. Tennessee's run into the kicker, Bob. That's Running automatic. into the kicker. Number 17 on the defense. That penalty is declined. The point is good. Yeah. It would have been half the goal. He yep. wouldn't have had a first down. He'd had to kick it again anyway. Tennessee defense has seen Mississippi State score on all four of their possessions tonight. Bulldogs up 20 to 14. And there is the coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Going to be awarded to the winner of the Discover BCS National Championship game. You see that on ESPN on Monday, January 7th. Going to be the 27th year the trophy will be presented to the national champion. Cordero Patterson, one of the most explosive players in all of college football, had a 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown earlier tonight. He was the number one junior college prospect, and he came to Tennessee this year after averaging 48 yards on kickoff returns a year ago in Juco. He is dangerous. Here's a hot tip. Don't kick it to him. Let's see if Devin Bell can play stay away, and that's exactly what they do. That's a live ball. ball. That is a live ball, and Mississippi State's Tavez Calhoun jumps right on it. Great job by the kicker Devin Bell and Derek Dooley is sinking in that chair up there in the press box. That has to be known. You cannot allow a ball to hit the ground. You can't do it. That's Rivera, Michael Rivera, the tight end. Now he needed to get on top. It looked like he didn't even have any awareness of where the ball was. Coach Dooley, he had complete awareness. He is beside himself and Mississippi State back out there on offense at the 33 yard line. Perkins and just a yard for Ladarius Perkins. You know, Tess, one of the things we talked about for Tennessee was you can't give up big plays. That was a big play and it came on a special team. So that's two special teams mistakes here tonight. One you take the timeout and the second one is this this uh, onside. Well, it's not really an onside kick a pooch kick that they lose for him. Second down and nine as Tobias Smith left the field moments ago. Russell big gun and complete to Johnson. Now Malcolm Johnson inside the 10 where it will be first and goal. He's been out all year up until this point with a torn pec muscle. Yeah the whole thing comes down to one thing Joe. Watch this. Outstanding. No no pressure. Great protection. And Tyler Russell is hotter than a firecracker man. He's at 187 yards right now. Only four incompletions on the night. First and goal. Perkins. That time unable to get much as he was wrapped up by Herman Lathers. Mississippi State's offense, look at what they've been able to do, controlling things throughout 246 yards and over 16 minutes of possession against that Tennessee defense. The little misleading part of that was Patterson's touchdown and, exactly. ran it back and gave him the ball right back as you look at Big Sal Sinceri, their defensive coordinator. He's worked up a lather already. Second and goal. Play action. Russell to the end zone. Caught for the touchdown. Marcus Green's second of the night. There's not a hotter quarterback in the country than Tyler Russell right now. In this game, this kid is on fire. Again, no pressure, great protection, but Joe, he is on. 15 of 19 for 194 yards and that strike as Mississippi State's up by 13. 
Derek Dooley up in the box. His reaction at the end of that last play. Well, we talked to him the other day. One of the things we talked about, Tess, they don't really have a pass rusher. And that's really proving out here tonight. So the times that they need to get pressure, they have to roll the dice and bring extra numbers, which puts more pressure on their back end. I think they like being unbeaten this deep into the season here in Starkville. Wild things have happened on special teams tonight. And this time Rivera gets the idea and fields the kickoff. Tackled by Fernando Bahana on special teams. Tyler Bray tried to get something before the half as he finds Neal out of the backfield, who does a good job of keeping his balance before he was leveled by Nico Whitley. As, as lopsided as this first half has been, Tennessee is a two minute drive away from getting this thing right back in the game. I feel like I haven't seen the Tennessee offense in forever in this game. Bray. That ball's batted. Almost intercepted as Caleb Yules had a shot at it. It was batted into the air by Dwayne Charrington. Yules had a shot. You'll see 74. Charrington gets his big hands on it inside. Not really going to get a big push, but he gets his hands up right there. Sets up third down. Gray on third and one, downfield, just off the hands of Justin Hunter. He was covered by Darius Slay, but he saw another defender coming into the picture that time, and it makes for a fourth and one. Yeah, Hunter saw the safety over the top, and Slay undercut it. Now, that's a little bit of alligator arms right there, because he had Broomfield coming, who was going to give him a little broomski right in the kisser. Keep in mind, Todd McShay, listen, as the number one wide receiver prospect for next year's NFL draft. So Tennessee, their third straight, three and out. Lardy with a big kick this time. And Banks with a fair catch at about the 22. As this undefeated Bulldog squad spent the week people saying they have to justify their ranking validate their record well, they're out to do it here as Perkins just gets about a half a yard that time under a minute and a half to go in the first half Tyler Bray hopeful that he can get out there and get another shot at this to stay in on second and 19 tackled by Herman Lathers and that clock will continue to run down here timeout and Tennessee has one timeout remaining remember the frustration we timeout. saw Tennessee. by Derek Dooley Game clock off right earlier please tonight please when they the used a timeout when they were lining up to defend that clock. field goal we'll take a quick break Three years at Tennessee, Derek Dooley has never beaten a ranked opponent. And trailing number 19, Mississippi State here, 27 to 14. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Allison Williams with you in Starkville tonight. Third and 12, and Tyler Russell is going to run it himself for a gain of four yards. Tennessee out of timeouts. That tackle by Ladarrell McNeil and Daniel Hood. So the clock will go under a minute with a fourth and eight approaching for Mississippi State. Well, the first half for Tyler Russell and that offensive line has been, geez, just about flawless. Mississippi State with 48 total plays to this point against Tennessee's 19 and for the first time tonight we see Baker Swedenberg first punt of the night for the Bulldogs. Deborah Young back for the return. As he muffs the punt and there's going to be a fight for that ball with 
22 seconds remaining in the first half. That was a knuckleball of a punt by Swedenberg. And Tennessee does have possession, so they dodge a bullet there inside the 40-yard line. Look at Young try to field this, Matt. Yeah, just at the end. <laughs> Just the 20th play of the night for Tyler Gray. Look at the arm strength for Gray. And it is intercepted by Corey Broomfield. Second consecutive big play by Broomfield. Remember, on that last third down, he took away the throw with the alligator arms, and now just playing center field, all he's doing is getting on top of Patterson and playing the ball. This is just well done. See, he's not going to get feet deep. Stay deeper than the deepest and just read that ball. Well done. Go down to the field to Allison. Thank you very much. Coach Mullen, how has your offense been so effective in the first half? I think we're just executing. They're giving Tyler time to throw the ball. Uh, receivers are getting open, catching and making some nice catches, and he's been pretty accurate tonight. How would you describe Tyler Russell and what he's been able to do with the time that line has given him? Uh, you know, I mean, we, he does what he, he's pretty accurate quarterback, and we know he's, he's a great leader of our team. He, he's thrown the ball well, gotten made good decisions with it which is what we need him to do, and we need him to continue to do in the second half. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And they were calling it a prove-it game. 5-0. and oh, They proved themselves well in that first half. Number 19, Mississippi State, up 27-14. Now let's join Wendy Nix, Robert Smith, and Todd McShay back in the studio for the college football halftime report. The number 19 team in the country. Up on Tennessee, 27 to 14 for Mississippi State. Joe Tessitore and Matt Millen. The MetLife getting it done is going to focus in on the protection for the Bulldogs quarterback, Tyler Russell. Well, they should because Tyler Russell, he's been getting it done also. But when you peel the onion back a little bit, take a good look at this protection. It all starts up front, and he's had time galore. Yet, Quazel, 75, 63, Jackson. Dylan Day, the center on the inside, Tobias Smith, and Charles Sidaway. That offensive line has given him time all night long. And, and the event, the, the couple events that he had where he had to move, he handled it beautifully. This has been a near flawless night for Tyler, Tyler Russell and that offensive line. 49 total plays for Mississippi State to just 20 for Tennessee. But Tennessee is going to get the ball to start the second half here, Matt. Best. This is going to be the most important possession they'll have all night. Is this first possession? They've got to get points out of it. Watch out for that guy. Cordero Patterson had a 98 yard return for a score in the first half. One of the breakout stars of the college football season who announced his arrival in week one against NC State with a couple of jaw dropping scores. Young that time, only able to get it out to the 18. Let's check in with Allison Williams. Hey, Joe, I caught up with Coach Dooley as he made his way back up to the press box. He said there has not been communication issues between him and his staff on the sidelines, but rather it's mistakes that have hurt Tennessee. He said they started out fine, but then mistakes on defense and special teams caused the offense to get out of rhythm and start to press. As far as trying to stop this Bulldogs offense, he said they need to eliminate the missed blocks, and when they get them in third and long, they have to take advantage and get off the field. If you're just joining us, the story with Derek Dooley is Allison. We don't often hear our sideline reporters say that they rode up in the elevator with a head coach, but Derek Dooley coaching from the press box tonight. And a recent surgery to correct a hip fracture, so Charlie Coiner is down on the field representing him. And they go with the reverse, and Patterson seemingly nowhere to go, trying to keep the play alive. Now looking for a block oh, from his quarterback. And he does have room. Look at Patterson making the most of this. All the 
way out past midfield, finally taken down by Darius Slay. What a way to open up the second half. Cordero Patterson, 34 yards there. Autry almost had him once, and then he reverses. Autry almost has him a second time, but I want you to watch the top end. Slay, number nine. That is a fantastic job of saving the score. Great. Going to run it himself, and Tyler Bray is taken down at the 30 yard line by Caleb Yules. And Bray is still down on the ground and now a little slow to get up as he gets a little help from a teammate limping his way back to the huddle. He got away with a little bit of a hold on the top to be able to get to this. But Ooh, oh, look that at that, that left ugly. leg bend backwards, Matt. Yeah, that's that's tough. See his ankle pinned underneath. He grabbed his left knee immediately at the end of that tackle. Second and four. Long back is Neal. And Neal patiently waits for the hole to open up and does get the first down tackled by McKinney. And you can see Bray still favoring that left leg as now Rajon Neal also comes off the field with a limp to his step. First down at the 25. And nothing there for Devrin Young. As Curtis Burgess filled that hole. Meanwhile, Justin Worley, the backup quarterback. Taking some snaps just in case. He looks on from the press box. Tyler Bray still favoring that knee, but he's he's going out wide. So this is going to be a run inside. This is Pig Howard, the freshman receiver with the direct snap. And Pig Howard darts his way to the 20-yard line. His given name is Alton. But that pig nickname has been carrying it for a long time. He goes 5'8. 185 will play some Wildcat quarterback. Freshman from Edgewater High down in the Orlando area. Third and five now as Bray is back in the shotgun. Nice matchups across that we're looking for. And that was thrown beyond the reach of Justin Hunter, who was covered by Slay. Slay was playing him in off coverage. Hunter had it. That was just an errant throw. Only one catch on the night for the All-America candidate, Hunter. See, he's, that's, that should be six. That's, I guess that's a, that's, a, that's a poor throw in the front, but he had him out leveraged, wide open. Michael Pilardi on for the field goal attempt. It's 13 of 15 in his career inside of 40 yards. This from 38. And Pilardi makes it a 27-17 game. Glad you're with us watching the SEC on ESPN. Number 19 up by 10 here at home, Mississippi State. One of 14 teams in college football still unbeaten. For Daryl Patterson and Justin Hunter, Patterson's been effective on special teams, but on offense, the star receivers not offering much tonight. But Darius Perkins on the return. Perkins getting out to the 23-yard line. Tyler Russell, he took a big hit as he released that ball, was looking downfield for Chris Smith, but that was Jacquez Smith again getting after Russell as yeah, that one's on Russell though that's what I was talking about earlier Tess. that's one of those times when that ball that receiver is open he needs to throw the ball right now don't wait don't take the extra steps it's got to be thrown the receiver came back on the comeback he was there that needed to be out that's the first time he's done it tonight they run with Perkins on second and ten and he barely makes it back to the line of scrimmage as once again it was Jacquez Smith getting involved. Okay, now you have to build a little momentum right here if you're Tennessee. You came down the opening drive. You got three. It wasn't what you wanted, but you got three and you're on the board. 
this is a big third down for this Tennessee defense. You stop them here, you get a little bit to give back to your offense and get it back on the field. Sal Siri, new defensive coordinator, came over after those years on Nick Saban's staff at Alabama, where his son Vinny is a defensive back for the number one team in the country. Third and ten. Russell slings it out and Green fights and tries to get the necessary yardage, but that spot looks like it may be a half a yard short. We will see. That was Justin Coleman who made the tackle on Marcus Green. Yeah, it's not where you step. It's where the ball is when you step out. Let's take a look at this at the end. See where that ball is. That's probably a pretty good spot. So they send out the punter on fourth and one as Swedenberg will kick away to Devrin Young. Big, big boot. Backs him up all the way to the 14 yard line. 4.77 hang time on the punt from Swedenberg. What will Tyler Bray offer up when we return? A little tap pass now to Pig Howard, and Howard finds his way out to the 22-yard line before he's tackled by McKinney. That's a good college player, that little pig right there. That's his name, Pig got, Howard. Got some good quickness, nice burst. He's one of those guys that hides behind the big people. He's hard to find when he comes out of that pile. Second and two as they go up tempo now does Tennessee. Devrin Young is the back behind Tyler Gray. And Young will slash right through that Mississippi State defense for a first down. Let's check in with Allison. Well, as you guys can see, Tyler Bray back out on the field. Trainers did take a look at him, and they put a soft brace on his left knee. Also, Rajon Neal, who was injured on that drive. Trainers still checking him out. They taped his left ankle inside and outside of his shoe. Having him run a bit on the sidelines, we'll see if he returns. This is Watson now getting playing time. The seldom used Quinshawn Watson with a run down to the 41-yard line. A 14-yard rush by the true freshman. Again, nicely blocked up front. And they're just they're just starting to pound it on him. He's over a hundred, right around 140 yards of rushing right now. Watson again. Oh, and he is just blown up by Nico Whitley. <laughs> With Whitley came out of the secondary from that safety spot and he read it perfectly. Just watch it. Kind of safety who doesn't mind being a little reckless with his body. Now watch the play action when you start fighting like that. Second and 11. Gray. And that is complete for a first down, and then thrown down that time was Vincent Dallas by Whitley. So they are inside the 30-yard line now as Tennessee is trying to creep back into this game. Tennessee is doing anything they want right now. Good protection, running the football physically. Brace finding a little bit of rhythm right now. And here is Young as Young forces his way close to the 10 yard line. You know you watch Devrin Young and you look at that offensive line. Remember I told you earlier that offensive line averages about 315 across the front. Big men. Devrin Young is a short guy but he runs with his pads low. He runs even lower. He's really hard to see when you're a defender. You get into one of those big guys. He's hard to find. Play action, Gray. And that'll make for a third. And Just screw it away, good decision. Put Patterson on the field. That's, that's the guy. There he is. 
Oh, he's up there all by himself with Slay matched up man to man. Everybody wanted to see that matchup. Well, now you have it on third and four. Gray looks that way and goes there, and Patterson wins the matchup. Touchdown, Tennessee. He wins the matchup, Tess, because that's a great route. And Derek Dooley watches his team come all the way down the field. 15 play scoring drive. See how Slay's trying to take away the inside then? His mistake was his eyes. He did not have good eye discipline. He kicked back. When you look at a quarterback, when you're in man, all you're going to see is a completion. We've got ourselves a ball game here in Starkville. Tennessee roars back. Strength versus strength. And Patterson gets the best of Slay. That is Darius Slay, the fine cornerback for Mississippi State. But moments ago, he just went up against one of the most dangerous players in college football. And Cordero Patterson got the best of him. An 11 yard touchdown reception from Tyler Bray. And this is a field goal game. Darius Perkins from the three-yard line in the return. And Perkins fights his way to the 25. Here's one. Darius Perkins now fighting for a couple of yards. And this Mississippi State team in the first half looked like it was one of those teams that everybody said, wow, they're better than I thought they were. There were and so many doubters this week, man, yeah. right? Five and over, but who had they, they played? Exactly. Was the question. And the bottom line is, if you watch this team, it's a big physical group. They have some skilled people. They have a skilled quarterback. They, they really need some more skilled people on the outside. But this Russell kid carried him in the first half, and he's got to do it again now. Should be the last play of the third quarter. Russell trying to avoid pressure, throws it downfield, and that is incomplete. And the offense, after looking so good in the first half and building up that lead, That's only four yards of offense for the Bulldogs in that third quarter. We've got a game heading to the fourth. You're watching the SEC on ESPN from here at Mississippi State. Joe Tessitore alongside Matt Millen in the booth. Allison Williams down on the field as we start the fourth quarter. Mississippi State up three, facing a third and eight. They keep it on the ground. Perkins picks up the first down and more. Tremendous effort and a big hole created by that offensive line as Perkins takes it to the 42. And a great play call. That was a great play call. So they bring their pass rushers in, so take advantage of them. And you see how they let him get up the field. Very nicely done. And Perkins puts an exclamation point on that third down. First first down of the second half for Dan Mullen's team. Perkins. And he slithers through the line out to the 42-yard line. Tyler Russell. The junior quarterback, many feel he's got an NFL-type arm talent, but he's been growing more and more and trying to become more of a leader, gain that experience. You see the difference between the first half and the second half as Dan Mullen's team charged out of the gate early here, trying to prove themselves. We said at the start of the game that this game would be squarely on the shoulders of Tyler Russell. First half was outstanding. Here's Perkins again. Perkins is wrapped up that time by A.J. Johnson, so it will make for a third and a couple of yards. In the first half, when they had things going, they were running the ball well on first down and setting up third and short. That's what they wanted to be able to do from the start, was get to that third and manageable, which is this down right here. Tennessee defense has struggled at times this year. You saw what happened against Florida and Georgia. Now they could use a fourth quarter stop against another ranked SEC opponent. It's a pass up third and two. Lofts it downfield and off the fingertips 
of Marcus Green. Marcus Green's been having himself a very good game. That's not one of his plays. Good coverage by Tennessee on the underneath. Russell wanted to hit that, and then he just lofted this out. Now watch this. That needs to be caught. Hands were wrong. Never let the ball cross your eyes. He did it right there. Dan Mullen knows it was a missed opportunity, and now they will kick it away. And they'll give that Tennessee offense another chance. Baker Swedenberg on to punt and Devon Young waits at the 15. Nine fifty four to go. Will this be one of those moments Tyler Bray's been waiting for? Last night downtown a little maroon madness the first practice for the Mississippi State Bulldog basketball team. I like this. They put the court right there on Main Street downtown. Great little scene this weekend. They're going to be heading to Maui to play in the Maui Invitational. So the surfboard is here under the bright lights of SEC football. Tennessee trailing by three against number 19. Here's Patterson. Dangerous in space if he can find some here as he cuts back and tries to fight his way to the 19 yard line. Allison. Joe, the Mississippi State defense didn't exactly jump up to run back on the field after another three and out. One thing that's different here in Starkville, you can actually see that the benches face towards the crowd, so you can really gauge how the players are feeling. This Mississippi State defense looked tired. Even John Banks admitted, I'm tired, but then he went up and down the defensive benches telling his guys, it is not over. We have to keep playing. They will find that energy some way. And find it right here as Tennessee's moving the ball with Devlin Young. There, ball, loose baller. It yeah. came out at the end and it was recovered by Banks. Devin Young, let's see. Watch Banks strip it. Oh, he does. Let's and then fall on it. You know what? A one-man show. Let's see if his hand is inbounds when he falls. Yes, it is. Wow. Fantastic play by Jonathan Banks. One of the top prospects in the country for next year's NFL draft, a consensus All-American, and makes that play all on his own to put Mississippi State in position to try to close out this game. Yes, that's what great players do. They make big plays at big times in games. And now Russell. Downfield gets it complete. Bumpus makes a move. And it's going to be first and goal. Bulldogs. That throw comes courtesy of protection by that Mississippi State offensive line. Gave Tyler Russell plenty of time because Bumpus got to the middle of the field and got on top of the second layer of coverage. Right there. Beautiful. Now watch for big Dak Prescott to come into the game here at quarterback. Remember, they did it earlier tonight. Redshirt freshman, 230-pounder, now comes in to play quarterback. Fields the snap that was just off to the side. Throws it complete down to the one-yard line to Arcido Clark. So it'll be second and goal from there. That's a heck of a throw. Watch this. On the run. That's a bullet. Tyler Russell comes back into the huddle now on second and goal. Mississippi State looking for a cushion here in the fourth quarter. They quickly line up. Perkins on the pitch. And Perkins into the end zone. And John Banks celebrates as his turnover turned into a quick six.
In spots like this, you need your All-Americans to play like it. That's exactly what Jonathan Banks did there. The strip, the recovery, and then Perkins with the score. 34-24, unbeaten Bulldogs up by 10. On a loud night here at Davis Wade Stadium, the Cowbells in full effect. 34-24, the unbeaten Mississippi State team here in the fourth quarter, just pushing the margin to 10 moments ago. They get the ball board, well, you can add the number 13 to that. Jonathan Banks with a forced fumble and recovery when Tennessee was trying to potentially tie or take the lead as he dances along. And that din from this big sellout crowd as the cowbells have been rattling and ringing for the past four minutes since that score. Patterson's back there asking for the ball. They squib this, and that's a live ball that's finally fielded by Tennessee at about the 27-yard line. And he gets the pitch, does Patterson. And quickly accelerates, and look at Patterson. To the 17-yard line, he picked up a good block. About a little Devrin Young. He only goes 5'8", 170, but he's getting his nose in there. Tess, let me say something. For those of you who don't know anything about Patterson, this kid is legit. This guy is a fantastic receiver, but he's even better with the ball in his hands, which is why they need to get the ball in his hands. Eric Dooley watches on coaching from the press box tonight after that hip surgery. Patterson has three carries for 57 yards. Devon Young now. And Young just crosses the 15-yard line, tackled by Skinner. The big offensive line has been working against that Mississippi State defensive front all night long. And as this game's gone on, they've been getting more and more push up inside. Patterson back in the game, working against Slay down below. They go trips to the near side. Patterson in that bunch. Zach Rogers, the other one. Good speed down here. They keep it on the ground with Young, and Young able to push his way to the 10 yard line, where it'll be third down and about three as Jonathan Banks came up to make the tackle on the sophomore running back. Devin Young, the tough little sucker. And he, he throws his face and they run inside. He keeps his pad level low. He's, like we said earlier, he's hard to find. But when he sees it, he accelerates into it. Right now, it seems there's an equipment issue with Young. So Quinshawn Watson, the true freshman running back, comes in. Remember, Ray Jean Neal, their starting running back, has been out most of the second half with an injury. Third and three, Bray. To the end zone, touchdown, Tennessee, Ben Bartholomew. Nice touch pass by Bray. Went with the play action. Bartholomew got on top of the coverage to the back of the end zone, and that's where the touch came in. And right next to you, just through the glass, Derek Dooley was watching it looked like he may have been calling possibly for a timeout just prior to that third down but he likes the result nonetheless and polardi with the extra point and we are just a three-point game now with 522 to play tyler bray pulls them back within striking distance and it makes for a happy Derek dooley up top Crazy. Maybe within the next couple weeks, Ben Bartholomew's family is going to be celebrating a Cy Young for R.A. Dickey. That's his brother-in-law, the Mets pitcher. Right now, they hope to be celebrating a Tennessee comeback. Bartholomew coming up with a touchdown reception moments ago to make this a three-point game again. Mississippi State, one of... The 13 teams remaining in college football still unbeaten. 
with so many saying, hey, they got to validate their 5-0 record. This is a prove-it game for Mississippi State against one of the best offenses in the SEC. And Ladarius Perkins will smartly take a knee and the touchback. They've had balance. They've had steady, consistent, chain-moving efforts. And now Ladarius Perkins. And Perkins works those legs out just past the 28-yard line where he's tackled by Herman Lathers, considered the leader of that Tennessee defense is Lathers. So I'm taking down under the five-minute mark now. There's Lathers, who's overcome so much in life, had bone cancer as a child. Watch the end of that. See how they're going to try to get that helmet off. Yeah, it wants them out of the game. Yeah, <laughs> which is not good. <laughs> you just want to make sure the head's still in it. Second and seven. And they run option to the near side, and here's the pitch now. And Perkins makes the first man miss, the second man miss, and then darts ahead and leaps for that first down. That is a fantastic effort by Perkins. And he comes up with a little bit of a little bit of a lift as he goes back, but Nicely done by Russell. Now watch this effort at the end. Just fantastic. Poor tackling, incidentally, but great effort. And good, good blocking by the receivers to stay out. See how he stays after Coleman? That's really well done. And it's Chris Smith who was trying to stay with that block as long as he could. So now a first down for Mississippi State as we approach the four-minute mark. And now Russell to pass. And that was broken up. And there is no flag as Eric Gordon came in that time. That's on Bumpus. Bumpus needs to come back to the ball. He Take can't a step wait towards for that. it, right? He's got to come back to the ball. Remember earlier in the game, we showed you how the receiver came back to the ball. This is completely on the receiver. That should have been a reception. So Eric Gordon reaching out with that left hand and coming around. Chad Bumpus. So it stops the clock right at four minutes and makes for a second and ten. Perkins now. And Perkins out to the 39-yard line, so it'll be third and long as Hood and Johnson First charge, made now. the tackle. Third and seven. They go empty set now with Perkins coming out to the near side. Bringing pressure. They pick it up. He goes to Bumpus and gets the first down. The reliable Chad Bumpus, his go-to guy, the senior receiver, as they will move the sticks. Well, he just answers the question, Tess, with all the pressure on him. He does a nice job, knows he has pressure, knows where the sticks are, hits Bumpus as soon as he gets himself some inside leverage. That one's a nice job, nicely done job by Russell. The numbers on Chad Bumpus. Has the most touchdown receptions in school history. Their leading receiver in catches and yards. And that was a critical one on third down. Perkins now using a few blocks that time to get close to the 45 yard line. They don't have a big time runner, but I'll tell you what, this Perkins kid right here, as we take it, we look at a timeout to Tennessee. This Perkins kid. He gets everything he can get out of the play. Changing out the line of scrimmage. Second and five. After the timeout by Tennessee. He's going to pass on second and five. He's got him. And completes it to Chad Bumpus. He knew he had man coverage. You saw him at the line of scrimmage. He checked it. He had Bumpus. He needed Bumpus to get leverage on the defender which he did which was just really well done and then here's the kicker test he bought some time see this he sees this outside he knows he has man-to-man -man on the outside they bring up the pressure now he needs him to get to the middle of the field buys time nice throw that's all on tyler russell seeing tyler russell grow up a bit tonight here and you see the communication pre-snap all the way through 
You rally it out to the outside. Two and a half minutes as he pushes to Perkins, who picks up a block. And then Perkins able to get down inside the 10 yard line for another first down. As now Mississippi State is knocking on the door, ready to break on through. And Perkins is over 100 yards on the night. Hey, none of these things go without good blocking by your receivers down the field. Watch Bumpus right here. Ooh, he got him. Got away with one there. Should have been up high on that. First and goal, Bulldogs. Trying to remain unbeaten here. That time, Russell keeps it himself, and he pays the price as the guy they call the Beast throws him down hard, A.J. Johnson. And then a little something extra. Well, the one thing you're never going to confuse Tyler Russell for as they take a timeout at Tennessee is a, is a pure runner. <laughs> He's not that guy. But he has run these option games pretty darn well and he's forced the defender to commit to him and then he dumps it off Mississippi State looking for their first win against Tennessee since 1994 and for Derek Dooley that man there three years he's never beaten a ranked opponent number 19 trying to seal up a win here tonight Perkins is taken down by A.J. Johnson. They'll let the clock drain here. Tennessee out of timeouts. And then they'll let the clock drain again on that fourth and kick it. So they'll get down to about 30 seconds if they don't get the first down here. Of course, a field goal would only have them up by six. And then give one desperate measure for Tyler Bray as you see Tyler Russell who has career highs tonight in completions attempts and yards and play clock counting down now on third and goal bobble that snap lucky just to secure it that snap was a little low They'll let that clock come down. And as you see the difference between the game clock and the play clock yeah, let that is 13 the, seconds. They're going to go all the way down and call a timeout with one second left. Davis Wade Stadium. Dan Mullen says we change the culture here to an I can culture, an I believe culture. Those cowbells ring true on a night like this, don't they? Fourth and goal here with 14 seconds remaining, and they will keep the offense on the field. Going to throw. Fourth and goal. Watch the one-hander. Let's see. Here's the catch. Pull it in. Foot is in. That is as good as it gets. That catch is as good as the camera work that brings it to you. Pretty in pink with that left foot coming down. That's it from Starkville. Mississippi State is...